In this demonstration, we're going to show you the step-by-step -step process of configuring our Cisco Unified Communications Manager to register our 9971 SIP phones. We're going to start from scratch. We're going to go through each step in the process so that regardless of what your deployment looks like, whether you're working with brand new servers or whether you're working with servers that have hundreds of phones already registered, you'll be able to follow our steps and get your phones registered in your collaboration network. We're logged on to Unified Communication Manager, and we're going to assume that this is a brand new server, that nothing is activated, nothing is turned on. So we're going to start from the beginning, and that means that we're going to go to Navigation, and we're going to have to drop down to Unified Serviceability. We need to activate some services. There's two services that have to be running if you're going to register an IP phone or any endpoint. When I say IP phone, I mean anything, video unit, telepresence device, later on we're going to register an SX10, a Jabber software client, all of those things are endpoints, and it's just a little bit easier for me to say phone, but I mean all of those things. In order to get any of them registered to a cluster, we need to activate two services somewhere in the cluster. We're going to go to Tools, Service Activation, and then we're going to select the Publisher, We've only got a single Unified Communication Manager server in this cluster, so we need to run both services on this server. But in your deployment, you probably will have more than one single server. You could have one server running one service, another server running other services. You can distribute that. We can have up to 20 servers. We need to check the box for Cisco Call Manager. That's got to run on at least one server in your cluster. You can turn this service on on up to eight servers. And then the other service that has to run somewhere is the Cisco TFTP server. This server that you activate the TFTP service on, the IP address of that server, in our example, is 10.1.5.15. That's the IP address that needs to be put into the option 150. And we've done that in our demonstration. Click Save. Click OK. The DHCP server needs to hand out that IP address so that phones get an IP address and they learn the IP address of this server because that's the one that's going to have their configuration file that they need to download. We're going to give this a few moments to come up and then we'll go on to the next step. Now the services have activated, we can scroll down and see. If we want to verify that the services are actually running, we would go to Tools, Control Center, select the publisher server, the only server in our cluster, and then click Go. The other server that you see in the dropdown is a I am and present server. That sort of adds itself to the cluster, but it's not a unified communication manager. It's a server that's going to support Jabber. And coming up in an upcoming demonstration, we'll use Jabber and we'll need that I am and present server. So when I say there's only one server in the cluster, but then when I do the dropdown, you see a second IP address, well, we can see that that's an I am and present server. Okay, so the services have been activated, and if we take a look here, we can see the start time, how long they've been running. So it lets us verify that the services are actually running and not just activated. Let's go to Navigation, Cisco Unified Administration. We'll go back to the main page, and then we'll add our phone. To do that, we're going to go to Device, Phone, Add New. Now, there are many ways to register a phone to Unified Communication Manager. We can use auto registration where if you want to register, no problem. Come on, everyone's welcome. We can use self provisioning where once they auto register, users can call in and completely customize their phones. We can use bulk administration where we add phones 10, 20, 50, 100, 1,000 phones in one move. We can use my favorite, quick user phone ad, which allows us to add the user, the phone, and the phone number at the same time. But for this demonstration, we're going to go old school. We're going to manually add a single phone. To do that, under phone type, we're going to scroll down and choose our 9971. Next. Remember earlier when I mentioned that one of the first things that we have to put into Unified Communication Manager is the MAC address? And there it is. So we're going to paste that in. We can give it a description. Doesn't really matter what you use. Use something that's going to work in your environment. We'll call ours the SIP9971, and the eventual extension that we're going to give the phone 2001, we'll add that to the description. The device pool, we're going to choose default, and then the button template. This is a mandatory setting. We're going to use the 9971. It's the only option that's available. And then the soft key template does not apply to this model. If we scroll down, there's a few other mandatory settings that we have to configure. We've got to determine whether or not we're going to associate a user to this phone. We haven't created any users. This server is brand new. 
It's got that fresh, new server smell. There's nothing on the server, so therefore we don't have any users to associate. That's all right. We're going to choose anonymous. We're going to scroll down, and there are two settings that we have to apply because this is a SIP phone, which means we have to associate a SIP security profile. We're going to use the default non-secure, and we have to associate a SIP profile. We'll use the standard SIP profile. The SIP profile has a lot of settings that we can modify so that we can customize how this SIP device communicates with others, but the default is going to be fine when we're just adding a basic phone. We're going to scroll back up to the top, click Save, and then it says, hey, make sure you click Apply when you're done. Okay. We can also reset. We can also restart. What we need to do now, excuse me? No, go ahead. We have a question. Ah, that's an excellent question. Her question is, what's the difference between restart, reset, and apply? Well, in just a moment, I can show you where to go to get the answer to that question. Before we do that, we're going to select Add a New DN because this is where we're going to associate the directory number. And this phone is going to have 2001. Now, this is an important step. If you were to immediately click Save, it wouldn't work. This number wouldn't take. Watch. Watch what happens if you are too quick on the draw. You go right from typing in the number, and then you move directly to the save and click save. You think you're done. Hey, there's some status up here, but I don't read that. Whatever. And you just go back to your phone. I'm done. I did what I was supposed to do. I put the number in. I click save. What's the big deal, man? Well, the big deal is the number doesn't stick. You didn't associate a number. Your phone's not going to register. So we need to go back and slow down. Take a breath. Put the number in. Now, click away. Click anywhere. Just click on the page somewhere. Let the page refresh. Take a moment and read the status message. It says, okay, now the page is refreshed. You may click save. So that's a crucial step. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people miss that step. And personally, I've missed it many times myself. Click away, then click save. But we're not done. We could add all kinds of things to this phone number if we wanted to. We could add a description. We could say this is going to be for the 2001 phone. The alerting name, of course, is if somebody calls you, we send them the alerting name. If we scroll down, we can choose call forward settings. If you call us and we don't answer, here's what we want to do. We want to either send it to voicemail or we could put in an extension number. Now, if you check the box for voicemail, that's what's going to happen. It's going to go to voicemail. So make sure that if you want to forward it to a number, you have to uncheck the voicemail box. And we go down a little bit further and we could set caller ID. The caller ID is also going to be sent to you, but that's if we call you. So the alerting name is sent if you call us, the caller ID is sent if we call you. Both descriptions are going to be sent to you. We already know who we are. We don't need the phone to tell us our phone number or our name. It's gonna to go to the destination. We'll put in the same display as we used as our earlier description for the phone. The line text label is what will show up on the phone, on the screen. If you look at the screen, whatever you type here is going to show up. So if you wanna name your line, you can, you don't have to. All of this is optional. Once you've got the information that you wanna provide filled in, then click save. Once that's done, we'll use the related links, we'll click go, we'll go back to the phone, then we're going to reset. And this is where we can see the difference between reset and restart. It tells us that resetting a gateway or trunk drops any calls in progress. Restarting a gateway tries to preserve calls in progress. The way that I remember that is, is the opposite of what you think it is. Reset drops all the calls and restart doesn't actually restart. It tries to preserve the calls. It can be confusing, but we like to think of Cisco's little idiosyncrasies as job security. All right, our phone has been configured and we've reset it. And now it's registered. If we go back to device, phone, click find. We should see that, there it is. Our device is registered. It has an IP address, it's registered to the server. It's ready to go. Coming up next, we're going to do it again. We're gonna register another 9971 phone so that we'll be able to verify that we can send and receive calls.